ओके गुड मॉर्निंग माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर सुनीता पाटिल एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फार्मेकोलॉजी डी वाई पाटिल मेडिकल कॉलेज सो टुडेज टॉपिक इज फार्मेको विजिलेंस एंड ए डी आर मॉनिटरिंग सो कमिंग टू इंट्रोडक्शन एनीथिंग यू कैन थिंक ऑफ एनीथिंग यू कैन सी एंड समथिंग यू डोंट इवन थिंक ऑफ कैन बी ड्यू टू अ ड्रग सो फार्मेको विजिलेंस द टर्म इट सेल्फ टेल यू समथिंग फार्मा मीन्स इट इज ड्रग और मेडिसिनल सब्सटेंस Vigilance is to observe, right? So, what should be observed? So, a drug, the whole life of a span of a drug should be observed. Means what? Starting from its development of a molecule, going to its trials. Say it is animal uh, trials or human trials, clinical studies, and then post-marketing surveillance when the drug is in the market. distributed in the market for its use so this is a life span of a drug so whole should be observed now today we are going to restrict to the post marketing surveillance after the drug is introduced in the market right so what is pharmacovigilance it is a science and activities related to the detection assessment understanding prevention of adverse effect of any drug related problem right so when you study pharmacovigilance you have to know two terms adverse drug reaction and adverse event so there is a slight difference we'll see that so that is adverse drug reaction is a response to a drug which is noxious unintended and which occurs at doses normally used for prophylaxis diagnosis therapy of a disease or for modification of physiological functions right so important is there is causality directly associated with the medicine i'll explain what it is what is adverse event the causality is not directly associated with the medicinal substance so example will clear this say antihistamines we have taught you antihistamines so means adverse effect of antihistamines is sedation and if we prescribe antihistamines and that person drives a vehicle and he meets with an accident because of sedative property so sedation is the adverse drug reaction and accidents or injury which will be a adverse event you are getting the difference same example other example i can give alpha blockers which are prescribed for bph that is b9 prostatic hypertrophy where these alpha blockers shows first dose phenomenon what is first dose phenomenon it is the first dose which is taken may lead to sudden hypotension and patient will fall so we have to instruct the patient that you have to sit and then take the medicine but if he doesn't follow and by standing itself he takes the medicine bound that he may sorry he may have a fall and it will show the injuries so this is fall in bp and fall and fracture so what is this fall in bp it is adverse drug reaction and what is this fall and having a fracture it is what is it it is adverse effect so you got the difference okay coming to background who international drug monitoring program was set up following a thalidomide disaster since 1978 so initially there was no concept of adr monitoring and such so there was a disaster that is thalidomide disaster this thalidomide was the drug given for pregnancy induced vomiting okay so pregnancy there was vomiting so this was preventing or antiemetic given for preventing vomiting in pregnancy so this was prescribed and then when the female they got delivered they delivered a ch children without limbs there were no limbs right so this is called as phacomelia so this adr is phacomelia so this disaster strike them that something has to be done of this adr monitoring or adr should be monitored Okay, so since then they started Uppsala Monitoring Center (UMC) at Sweden. What about India? India came into picture in 2005 by WHO-sponsored and World Bank-funded National Pharmacovigilance Program of India, which was started in 2005, and then we came to different monitoring system and all those things. Okay, now why is pharmacovigilance and ADR monitoring important in India? right so it is very important to monitor why specifically wide population has vast ethnic variation so we as we you as we know there is wide population ethnic groups are are different maybe genetic 
uh, makeup may be different. So, these people who are genetically different, they may react differently to this drug and may show different side effects which normally may not be seen. So, that has to be monitored. Different disease prevalence pattern. So, prevalence of disease is different. Say in US it may be different, for our country it is different. So, that also be has to be seen. Parallel practice of different systems of medicine. Now, what is parallel practice? We are doing allopathy, some are practicing homeopathy, some will practice uh, Ayurveda. So, one patient may have get allopathy, homeopathy, Ayurveda. So, getting these three drugs may show some interactions and lead to side effect, adverse effect, which has to be monitored. Next is socio-economic uh, socio status, which may react differently with a, dip, uh, with a drug and show ADS. Now, who should report ADR? So, question in mind, who should report the ADR? So, all health workers can report it, right? So, doctors, dentists, pharmacists, nurses, other health professional, drug manufacturers also has to report. What about patient? Can patient directly report? For India, it is no. For India, it is no. But in US, directly patient can report the ADR. Coming to what should be reported now. Okay. Now, we know what is ADR, who should report, but what should be reported? That is important. So, for new drug if it is a new drug already it is marketed so for new drug each and every adverse effect or beneficial effect even if it is there it has to be reported this is for new drug for established drug if it is a established drug all serious side effect and unexpected ADS should be reported second is report if an increased frequency of an established reaction is observed means what say it is already established drug you know few ADRs are bound to be there but suddenly the frequency of that ADR which was already known is suddenly increased so frequency is increased so some problem is there that also should be reported next report all suspected ADR associated with drug 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 food or drug food supplements now, report herbal and complementary product interaction. Herbal, whenever say we herbal, there are so many advertising, televisions in your, you can say, uh, paper, isn't it? So, that is herbal preparation, no side effect, safest. Is it so? No. Recently, in last Monday's Times of India, there was an article saying that herbal cream, they found a chemical substance was there, that is local anesthetic agent was there in that cream which was used for relieving pain. So, this they say it is a herbal, but chemical substance was found. Second example is that herbal preparation to increase the sex potency, they said, and the drug sildenafil, that is a drug was added into it, which is a chemical substance, right. So, this is very problematic that this sildenafil, if it is taken by the cardiac patient, there will be sudden hypotension and patient may die due to myocardial infarction. Such cases are there and uh, report, reports are also there. So, this saying herbal, but the chemical substance was found. So, that also has to be seen for. Next is report ADR associated with drug withdrawals. If you have given the drug and now you have suddenly stopped it, some drugs may show this withdrawals. Report ADR occurring from overdose or medication error. Any overdose is there, any side effect you report. Medication error also should be reported. Report if there is lack of efficacy. Lack of efficacy, for example, we can say if a uh, person is prescribed an antibiotic. So, as expected, he will get cured say for 5 days, whatever prescribed treatment. But later on, after continuous use of drug in population, there may be that these drugs are not showing that efficacy which was shown initially. The reason may be, maybe resistance may be, have been occurred. So, this reduced efficacy has also should be reported. Then, when suspected pharmaceutical defects are observed. How pharmaceutical? That is for example, again I can give in Australia in 1968, there was a sudden break in toxicity of phenytoin. Now, you know phenytoin is prescribed for epileptic patients. So, they saw that everything was fine and one day you, they saw that there was increased or sudden outbreak of phenytoin toxicity. 
so they went back and they saw or uh, there was a reason behind for pharma pharmaceutical preparation of a drug so pharmaceutical they prepare the drug it is not chemical substance as whole they have to add fillers into that drug substance right so this fillers for phenytoin it was calcium sulfate which was normally added but as calcium sulfate was exhausted and so they thought we will replace it with lactose so minor change may not bring any problem so they replaced this filler with lactose and lactose is highly soluble so what happened it was sudden release of a drug which triggered the toxicity so these are also should be seen pharmaceutical preparation which may bring the problems so again it has to be reported report even if you are not certain the product caused the adverse reaction if you are not certain that this may be due to this forget you have to report it reaction related to blood and blood products so this has a different system which is called as hemovigilance for drug it is pharmacovigilance for hemo that is adr related to blood transfusion will be reported or there is a system called as hemovigilance and reaction to any medical instrument use of any any medical instrument leading to adrs also has to be reported okay now what are different ways of adr reporting so there are different adrs which are reported but by different ways for example we can see so accidental case reporting this is called as an ectodotal reporting that is doctor to doctor reporting say patient doctor is giving a prescription and the patient is taking it he complains of something so this doctor will just tell his friend doctor that this is this is, has been happened so this such type of adr was reported that is terfenadine which is a antihistaminic which was prescribed which showed cardiac arrhythmias and there were death reported with this so uh, this terfenadine was withdrawn so this is doctor to doctor or called as anecdotal reporting second is cohort studies cohort means forward that is prospective so you give a drug and you see for that adrs that is prospective second case control study that is retrospective backward that is example for this aspirin was prescribed to children right and they showed race syndrome that is it was prescribed for viral infection but this uh, came across this uh, fulminating liver failure and there were deaths of this children so that time they didn't know what was given so they went back so why this was occurring which medicine was given so they went back and saw it was aspirin which is causing race syndrome hence you should never prescribe aspirin for children less than 16 years now yellow card system which is practiced in us yellow card system which is practiced over there they monitored that is cuff by ac inhibitors ac inhibitor causes cuff this was adr reported by yellow card system next is prescription event monitoring that is all the prescriptions were studied all the prescription were studied they found deafness with enalapril so enalapril was drug was given and chronic use of this drug causes deafness international recording linkage in this what they did internationally all the prescription was studied and they found there is a link between antihistaminic prescription and motor accident this was due to because antihistaminic causes sedation so whenever we prescribe antihistaminic we have to tell patient or instruct not to drive the vehicle okay so these were different ways now coming to pharmacovigilance system for india how it works first so this is a flow chart at the head there is pharmacovigilance that is pharmacovigilance program of india pvpi okay so cdsco central drug standard control organization which is at ghaziabad which acts as ncc ncc is national coordinating center so each nation will have is its own coordinating center for us it is at ghaziabad cdsco acts as our ncc so this heads so under this there will be zonal coordination center so there are four zones east west north south okay now this four zones so each zone will have 10 peripheral adr monitoring centers each will have 10 so if we are in south so we have in bombay we have jj medical college km nair medical college pune we have bj 
डी वाई पाटिल पिंपरी और यर नियर बाय इट इज मीरज मेडिकल कॉलेज सो दे आर ए डी आर मॉनिटरिंग सेंटर्स एंड सम मोर सो हाउ इट वर्क्स सो वेन एवर देर इज ए डी आर वी हैव टू रिपोर्ट दे आर ए डी आर रिपोर्टिंग फॉर्म एल बी शोइंग दैट लेटर ऑन सो दिस ए डी आर मॉनिटरिंग सेंटर और इफ वी हैव फाउंड दैट दिस स्पेसिफिक ए डी आर यू हैव टू फिल द ए डी आर फॉर्म एंड सेंड टू पेरीफ्रल ए डी आर मॉनिटरिंग सेंटर फॉर एस इजीली इज के एम बिकॉज इट इज वेरी एक्टिव सो मेनी ऑफ दैम विल सेंड इट टू के एम हॉस्पिटल देन दिस पेरीफ्रल ए डी आर मॉनिटरिंग सेंटर्स विल एसेस इट दैट कॉजलिटी असेसमेंट इट इज कॉल्ड आई वोट गो इन डिटेल ऑफ दैट सो दिस कॉजलिटी असेसमेंट इज डन बाय दिस एंड देन सेंड टू जोनल कोऑर्डिनेशन सेंटर राइट नाउ दिस जोनल कोऑर्डिनेशन सेंटर विल असेस और कॉजलिटी असेसमेंट विल ऑल्सो बी डन बाय दिस एंड सेंड द ए डी आर फॉर्म्स टू दिस एन सी सी नेशनल कोऑर्डिनेशन सेंटर विथ सॉफ्टवेयर कॉल्ड एज वीजी फ्लो दैर इज अ सॉफ्टवेयर वीजी फ्लो दैट इज इट हैज टू बी सेंड विद इन सेवन डेज ऑफ रिपोर्टेड ए डी एस and then what happens this ncc will again analyze the data and send it to upsala monitoring center sweden and then it will be analyzed whether it is it has to be withdrawn any modification has to be done so it is assessed and they are been accordingly seen for okay how and where to report we have seen so this is called as spontaneous reporting by filling the adr reporting form send to nearest amc or directly you can send to ncc okay what happens to this submitted information handled with strict confidentiality even we are going to fill the form you have to sign it the host, the person who is going to send it so the uh, confidentiality is maintained his name is not leaked okay second is causality assessment is carried out by amc or ncc by umc scale who umc scale or nirango causality scale for this is for finding whether the adr is probable possible definitive so there is different mild moderate severe type so this causality assessment is done by them and sent by vg flow to ncc and then lastly further forwarded to umc that is upsala monitoring center sweden and it will be assessed over there and action will be taken okay now adr form you can get at this website www.cdsco.nic.in it is already available as a software also so this is a adr reporting form so all details you have to mention the name of the patient age sex weight which drug was taken what reaction was there what was the dose taken what other drugs were given associated with that may lead to some adverse drug or interactions you can say and lastly the uh, who is going to send details of him with the signature this is mandatory in detail i won't take how it should be filled we'll make a next lecture for that so this is the adr form accordingly you have to fill and then you have to send forward okay now there is one problem that is problem in functioning of pvr the system is very good but where is the problem there is under reporting why under reporting so there are few reasons why there is under reporting they don't want or by some reasons they are not able to report the adrs first is fear of targeting isn't it so if you report a adr they may think that i may be targeted say for negligence or any other reasons so that is fear of targeting unawareness of importance of reporting people they may be, they are still not aware that how important is to report the adr and go through this pharmacovigilance system program for india and last lack of time of course we see physicians are very busy schedule isn't it they don't have time but it requires only 5 minutes and you can train your residents for filling the form say if this is adr the resident can fill the adr reporting form so that system can be availed okay so to overcome this what we can do to overcome the under reporting so we can take few measures so first is mci made mandatory to have pharmacovigilance committee and see its function so whenever mca come for inspections they definitely see for the pharmacovigilance committee if there is present and whether it is working specifically see, they will see for that so this is mandatory nowadays frequent training workshops to sensitize healthcare workers so frequent training should be there work workshop should be there for mbbs training in mbbs itself should be there for importance now you don't you not able to report adr but you should know the importance of future you can avail that 
then awards are in the form of acknowledgement say if you are reporting the adr so that person who is reporting he should get some award or say award means a acknowledgement say you have done a good thing so in that way so he will be happy in that way so you can boost that second is drop box in the campus so you can keep a drop box in the campus that you fill the form and put in the drop box and as pharmacology is heading this adr reporting and all those things we can do all the work for and forward the adrs that can be done so to conclude what we can say that is adr reporting is a key for functioning of pharmacovigilance program of india right ADR reporting will improve the healthcare system of our country. Definitely, it will help to reduce the mortality and morbidity of the patients. And lastly, you report ADR and be a part and parcel of our ADR reporting system, which PVPI, that is Pharmacovigilance Program of India, which is definitely is going to help in us in future. So, this ends with this. Thank you.